So I'm looking for a service I provide and I'm looking for Boxcast. Boom. So I'm gonna log in. And what book Boxcast does for us, it, it allows us to do content management. Mm. So nice. how does it how does it do that? How does it do that? We are able to, on the left, if you can see, look at the dashboard, schedule a broadcast, view different channels to embed. I'm going to show you what each does. Upload a media, view reports, change settings, and to update sources. So when you're broadcasting on Sunday, for example, tomorrow, and we are broadcasting a pre-recorded content, first thing we do, we go to media, upload, and we upload the video that is already recorded, which is what I'm going to show you at the end. Give me a sec, there's someone who is taking me to meet. I don't remember him ever being investigated. No one called me. He didn't get in trouble over it. It was like nothing really ever happened. Okay. Well done. And it probably just be now for about 10 years, but I'd say 80% of my job is. Let's give me a second. I'm uh, having some uh, technical difficulties with the. I started working on his case with Ryan Edwards. He told me that the FBI was doing a parallel case. They really don't have much. It was just really going along slow. I'm a fan of the FBI. I work very closely with them. I said, what can we get to speed it up? I had one more at the time when I started working with this in 21. And one more was. We can't hear the people speaking. He didn't only make them speak. I'm working on uh, muting. For 40 years, I spent in law enforcement, but I had to do abuse yeah. girls and girls that were victims of a pedophile mm. and how broken these girls were. <laughs> These are the girls that I have been able to identify myself as a victim. I started going to the depressed areas of West Palm Beach mm -hmm. and these neighborhoods, and I would meet someone, uh, one of the girls that Brad was representing, would know someone, give me their name, and that's how I started finding them. Excuse me, so whoever is speaking, if they can mute themselves because I'm uh, unable to find or to do it on my end, I'm sure I should be able to let that. I am apologizing. So if someone who is on the phone can mute Simon Hassel, please. Hey Tyson, Tyson, mute your phone, mute your iPad, mute. Hey Jim Jr., have your grandson mute his iPhone. Okay, got it. I'm sorry. All right. So this is a type of uh, technical difficulties to expect all the time, but it shouldn't happen, but it's part of life. Anyway, I was on how to how, how we upload content from Boxcast before we uh, schedule it for st uh, streaming, which is what I'm gonna show also later. Embed, so what is embedding? What this is, 
Box, Box, Boxcast generate a code for us, which you don't need to understand that if you're interested, this is a JavaScript uh, section and it's creating a, a, a div and it's pointing to a Boxcast content and it's referencing the content that is in Boxcast and we can embed this script on mounzan.net and that script is what generates this, which is another web editing section. Um, if you need to know, you can learn, but, but I'm not going to spend time on uh, those details because we need to know how to do streaming. So you now know how to embed uh, scheduled streaming from broadcast on a site. So how do we uh, schedule now? Before I show you, you can view all past uh, content and here yeah, they show the upcoming content. And for this, this streaming for tomorrow, I already did it, but I'm going to show you how I did it. So what I did is I went to media upload, upload uh, content, then I went to browser, then I have to go into the folder where I have that content. And as I'm speaking of uh, CMS content management, I'm going to also show you <clears throat> why I organize content in this fashion. Uh, like me, I have thousands of that I have to manage on a regular day, uh, basis. So the way I do it, you don't need to do the same, but um, that's my style. I organize content by uh, fiscal year or calendar year. And then I prioritize based on how I want how I want to name them. For example, here in 2020, I have a folder for Adobe, which is where I have uh, content that I will be showing you uh, in a later session today. I like biking, so I have a folder called biking. I like reading, I have a folder called books. I have a folder called DCMA, my employer, folder called education, family, finance, fitness, PIP, Lee, license, and so on. So then for Mount Zion, I have folders for what I do for Mount Zion. So I have archives, I have audio, documentation, forms, meetings, members, photos, reports, research, streaming. So I'm looking for streaming. The reason why I do this is that I always uh, tell myself if I forget what I'm looking for, or what that is, this make it easy for me to like know without thinking. And then for streaming, I have by because we are in 2020 folder, mountain streaming. Now each month I have a, a folder for that. So I had a folder for April. Now I have a new folder for June, but I'm working for on a folder for May. And in the folder of May, I have Sundays. So I have the 3rd, 10th, 17th, 24th, and uh, some, some content, uh, some content folder name have typos, but it allow me to know where that is. So for tomorrow, I have a folder and each folder has another subfolder and content in that folder have numbers. And where those numbers come from? I have a document that I received from the church. And this is very important. And this is also part of uh, uh, content management. Because when you have a lot of things to do, you have, you have to put them in order. So to know who, if I have a video for call to worship, if I have a video for invocation, if I have a video for altar prayer, that's why I need this list to make sure I have everything that is required. 
and then I give each item a number. And in the folder I showed you, um, I look at a, a folder, item number, and they tell me what file to look for. And this, uh, like on a Friday night, after doing so many things, uh, my memory became a little uh, distracted. So having this information allowed me to stay uh, focused and know uh, what to find, what I'm looking for. So this is how we upload um, a pre-recorded video. And I also showed you how CMS comes in and CMS can help you. So next, how long does it take to upload upload a three gigabyte file? So I'm gonna go to properties. This file has three, almost four gigabytes. And the time it takes to upload this on Boxcast varies based on your internet provider. So I'm gonna look for my internet speed. I'm doing this because I need to show you why for some it may take five minutes and for others it may take 10 hours. So my internet provider is uh, Comcast and uh, on a good day, the speed can be as high as 200 megabytes per second download and upload. But upload varies from uh, location to location and from companies. And this is another business uh, model. Like, uh, okay, so they are telling me that my download speed is 192 megabytes per second. My upload speed is four megabytes per second. Let me show you why this is very important. Um, Oh, megabyte per second. And we are going to upload our four megabytes um, five. And this is equivalent to almost 4,000 megabytes. So if you do the math, if I'm uploading four megabytes per second and I need to upload 4,000, you're looking at a couple of hours. But if you had a speed of, One thousand megabyte per second. Then you'll be talking about uh, uploading this uh, file in four minutes. So this is why I asked Mount Zion to upgrade their services so we can do. Uh, we can we can be sure that anytime someone can go to Mount Zion and then do upload a file and in less than 20 minutes, we know that uh, we have a Sunday service ready. So that's why Boxcast and other streaming services require uh, an internet service that is capable of accepting the content in a given time. <clears throat> so 
once you upload your video, which I'm going to show you later, then you can go to schedule. So you can choose how you want to name your file, but uh, I just uh, wanted to create um, a name format. So I always call this, the, the video the same thing, except that I change the date. Uh, for example, for tomorrow, it's May 31st. And I want to choose, I can add a description, but I leave it blank. I can add a preview image, but I leave it blank. And the source for books has, we have two types of uh, sources. It can be bo uh, broadcasting live, which requires uh, a bookscast uh, device that you plug on several devices that are recording and then you broadcast through that device, but we don't do that. We only did it once. But right now, which I think we're going to do for a very long time, we pre-record and then we upload as I showed you. And then when you select source, we want to re because when we uploaded Boxcast assumed we broadcasted what you uploaded then. So then when, when we do scheduling, we select as rebroadcasting, and then it gives me a choice to go to select a source. And this is where it gives me a choice of uh, post or past broadcast content. And then that's where I select the <coughs> video I want to use like for tomorrow and then so I'm not going to do it because I already did it but if I have to I will select that video and then it's selected and then I check the date I want to schedule that that will be tomorrow then I select the time and it will be 10.45. The end time, you don't select it because it already calculates the length of the video and that, that's the end of the time. And then broadcast time. You can make it private, but for us, you have to make it public. Channel, you don't use it, but you can select it. And uh, this is where content management comes in, where you want to help organize your content but you don't use it here destination this is where i'm going to spend a little time because the destination also falls into the social media and streaming and how we do the streaming part so destination we have both boxcast provide three but you can have more so they provide Periscope, YouTube, and Facebook. So I already set this up. Uh, this required to open an account on each of these. And then once, if you don't have an account set up, let's say, because you are seeing, okay, let me select YouTube, for example. It asked me, do you want to use to broadcast on my timeline, on page, or groups, or, or events. For us, we want to broadcast on MZBC uh, page at, let me show you, uh, MZBC. So this is the account you want to broadcast on be able to link it to boxcast you need to have an admin permission or privilege so i have an admin privileges and that's why you will see the facebook page it will show all facebook pages i have access to and because I already set it up, if I was doing it for the first time, it would ask me 
to log in and to provide my credentials, but I already did it. So I'm going to select Mount Zion. And as I said, you can also select other sources. I already set up a, a Mount Zion YouTube channel. Same. And then I'm going to select also Periscope. By doing this, what's going to happen, for example, tomorrow, what, what you've been seeing like uh, for last Sunday, this is automatically generated, like it will automatically appear on this page because I scheduled it. So the last one was the 24th. Tomorrow, I don't need to do anything. It's been scheduled. So we are not going to be like, going live here. It's going to be uh, live streaming from a source or a data content or data management system. And that's also another part or way you do content management provided by a third party. You can do content management by yourself from your device, but it's easy if it's uh, from an existing source. <coughs> so, at this point, does anyone have a question? Because I'm going to go to a different uh, subject that you need to know in all this process. And again, what I'm uh, going over is uh, a life cycle of uh, from starting to finish of uh, streaming service. Uh, someone has a question. Yes, I can hear what you're saying, but I can't see you on my laptop screen. Uh, you don't need to see me, you need to see the screen. Do you see my screen? No. Is anyone seeing my screen? I see your presentation and then the, um, the faces to the right side and the smaller boxes. Okay, thank Correct. you. Yes. So who who is not going who is not seeing or viewing my screen? I am not. Steve. This is Rhonda. I am this is Steve and I'm not. Okay. Are you on the on, on, on the phone or on a computer? I have both. My phone, I'm just looking at the numbers and it said that Hey, they put me on hold, and so I, I heard you talking, but I haven't been able to see anything on the screen. Okay, how about you, Rhonda? Uh, you know, I, I can see you on my computer, not on the phone, so I'll just go to the computer. Absolutely. And it could be patience that you need to let Steve in, and because he's got two devices going, it'd be better that he would... Um, default to one or the other well neither one of them are working so uh, maybe i'm not doing something right i don't know it's the first time i uh, so because i don't know the details i'm sorry if you take me time to fix your problem uh steve i'm gonna leave it and i'm gonna continue because uh i'm sorry i just uh I don't have time for fixing uh, the why, all right? Okay, that's okay. All right, go ahead. All right, no problem. So, I have I, a question. Go ahead. Do Is that, this a good time, patients? Sure, go ahead. Uh, yes, it sounds like one of the biggest delays is downloading the, the footage or uploading, sorry, uploading the footage. I yeah. wondered if there is another platform that would be more efficient one question and two what is a good uh, speed to upload faster uh, i know you said high speed can you tell us how many um, megabytes that is per second or just to have some idea what would be efficient okay thank you that's a good uh, question uh just to put you on the speed uh mount Zen has upgraded uh, their uh, up, upload uh, speed 
usually I used to do this at home, but uh, if my uh, internet speed is so low, I go to Mount Zion and uh, use their new system, which was taken care of by, uh, I requested it to be done. And then uh, Sam Bell is the one who is responsible for uh, our internet technology. So we, we, Mount Zion is taken care of, but if you want to do it at home, that's a different subject. But for Mount Zion, it's, uh, it's been solved. What, what that is, I showed you that uh, at a speed of less than, let's say, four megabytes per second, Mount Zion now has up to almost 90 or 100 megabytes per second upload speed. That make your upload of uh, four megabytes, no, I mean, four gigabytes less than 10 minutes instead of like 10 hours or 24 hours. Does that answer your question? Yes, that's great. And um, do you think that also, because I, I just, I'm just trying to understand just uploading basic um, footage video to just the, um, just the social media platforms and it just doesn't take anywhere near that long. I'm just trying to understand why it takes that long to, through a platform, but it's not streaming. Do you think that another platform could be more efficient, even though I, I hear what you're saying, the problem is resolved at Mount Zion uploading, but in case somebody is, you know, in the event that the church is closed, if they are um, editing or up streaming from off location, do you think there is, it makes a difference in the platform that you're using? Like we just talked about StreamYard. I don't, I don't know if you okay, I can answer that question. It's not, it's not a platform issue. Okay. It's an uh, end user issue. All those platforms, because YouTube is the biggest one. And when you upload for hours on YouTube, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, it's a platform uh, issue. So the platform speed is defined by the end user uh, capability. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and and Judah, this is Ricky. So what he's referring to, and I know you know, it's the speed that your provider is providing for the upload. Some areas, as you know, the signal's not as strong, so it takes longer. And if you've upgraded like Mr. Bell did for Mount Zion, it's able to be uploaded faster. But it's based on who your internet provider is and the speed or the program that you've paid for, signed up for. Oh, okay, yes. I was just wondering if there was another solution. But again, I hear him saying that it's, that's resolved at Mount Zion. But yes, thank you for clarification, Ricky. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to move on hosting. I'm going to go just give me a sec. Um, pulling up the site. So, I'm going to make sure I'm on target. Web hosting. What is web hosting? You know that um, everyone can uh, host anything in terms of website. What you do, you can do what they call peer to peer. You can have a site on your computer and someone can have access on your computer. And that's what they call peer-to-peer. -peer. And you, you can also host, if you have an IP address, you can give someone an IP address and then they can have access to your content via your IP address. And what if you want to broadcast around the world and uh, you want to provide information no one is going to memorize an IP address because in, in the past, an, in, an IP address is nothing more than a phone number. It's just like 10 digits. So to fix that, that's where the, the middleman companies comes in like uh, Comcast and other provider, they give you an IP address. But as people are going to remember your IP address, the host comes in, that's where uh, 
for Mount Zion, we use a host called host gator. There are many other uh, platforms. The popular ones are like, uh, GoDaddy, one in one, and many more. So now you know what a uh, web host does. A uh, web host is just like a middleman allowing you to get your content and then allowing you to broadcast your content around the world what they do they manage your content so the other thing you need to know for web hosting there are many choices you can make on a web host you can either have a dedicated web host for big companies and for small companies like my on giant you can select a shared uh shared hosting and Inside web hosting, you have different uh, platforms. The popular one is WordPress, and there are many more, but Mount Zen use WordPress. So if you want to learn more, you can look at um, WordPress and at the platform. I'm taking a time to show you so you can have an idea. So you may have uh, heard about uh, Wix, Webly, Squarespace, Shopify. All these are platforms that allow you with no knowledge to be up and running in like five to 10 minutes and your website is open to the public. So to do that, you need a web host, a platform, and time to do what you need to do, building and, uh, and voila. So again, in this uh, session, I'm not going to show you how to do things, I'm gonna show you or teach you how to find things and how to know what to look for. So now you know what a web host does and what it's for. And uh, we did that your content management. And I'm gonna now briefly go to- Excuse me. Go ahead. Hey, patients, I have a question. I need clarification on web hosting. Okay. Is that the category of platform used to stream on like are you saying that Boxcast is a web hosting platform or is web hosting something different? That's a, that's a good question. There, is a, there, are, there are platform for broadcasting, platform for web hosting, platform for different things. So good, good, uh, good question. So um, Boxcast is used as a platform for uh, streaming. And okay. Our yeah, host gator is a platform for web hosting. And also for example, Facebook is a platform, is a social media platform. YouTube is a video sharing platform. So platform is just a fancy word for uh, describing what a service provider does. Does that answer your question? I'm trying to see the difference. Uh, do you need both to stream? So yes. do we have to have uh, the host for that box cast to stream? Yes, you, you need you, you need you need a uh, a web host for oh. streaming. And so you need a web host platform and you need a streaming platform. And then you combine them together and uh, yeah. 
Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Good question. Any other question? Okay, no question. So the next is uh, front end and back end. So you hear these terms often, and I'm going to briefly tell you what, what, what it is. I'm going to use our Mount um, Zion. So any member or visitors will see this site. And uh, just, just so you know, by the way, we are updating this site. And uh, in the near future, you may see something that looks like um, hold on. Something that looks like this. So, we want to make it a little more presentable and uh, organized, you know, up to date. So, this is the front end. Everyone can see this. And the back end, to make this happen, Somebody spend time editing and updating or making changes, and that's what the back end is. And uh, I can need some uh, coding experience or zero experience. That's where a platform comes handy. A platform has so many things set up for you, and what you need is just uh, a little knowledge on what the platform does. For example, for Mount Zion, um, so it's a live site, site. I'm not going to mess around with it. Uh, I just want to show you. Like you see that uh, there are these uh, links that direct uh, people to our uh, social media. Let's say I want to remove uh, um, WhatsApp because we don't, Mount Zion doesn't have the, that, that WhatsApp section. I'm going to go to the dashboard, then I'm going to look for the post. I'm going to go to all posts, then I'm going to look for where that okay, look at it and it's I already know it. It's called live streaming and I'm gonna want to edit it and I'm gonna look and Patients, what you are showing us now is, is, is restricted spaces. I don't know why we would live, we would want to change any of these uh, services. Uh, it's, it's restricted, but I'm uh, showing you how, how it works so you can have an idea and you can be aware. So I'm not going to make any change. I'm just going to show you how it works, okay? But there are some, also some changes that uh, I need to do anyway that I'm going to just take this time to make. So I, as, I said, as I said, uh, as I said, for example, we do not use the WhatsApp uh, uh, as a notification system. So I want to take it out. Just as simple as that. I do it. Save. Update. And it's telling you that it's updating. Then I'm going to switch. And, and voila, okay, that section is, is gone. So that, that, that is to show you how you can edit content on your site inside the back end for WordPress. There are many back end for different platforms. And again, if you're interested, you can go learn 
at the platform and how their backend works. And also, if you are uh, okay, hold on. If you are into development, uh, so this is the time for that. I'm gonna spend five minutes to show you how you can use any other platform like uh, Visual Studio to do exactly the same thing. So, so I'm using a Visual Studio, but you can use any video editor to do uh, web editing. Um, I'm seeing that I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip this uh, option and I'm going to go straight to my schedule. All right, so I showed you website, front end, back end using uh, WordPress. I'm going to skip the HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript uh, database, and Python because this is itself a different uh, beast that you need to be aware of that can help you to do more editing. I can very quickly let's see if I can show you. Uh, edit this section. Okay. So this is welcome to Chrome on Windows 10. After installing Chrome. Thank you. Text. All right. So, what I want you to show you is uh, even if I'm going to skip HTML, CSS, what you see on the page, on many pages, is uh, something that looks like this. It makes no sense to many people because to know this, uh, you need a PhD. No, I'm kidding. Like you need to, to know the syntax and to make it easy, platforms like WordPress allow you to, you know, visualize and then drag and drop. And that way you don't need to do um, any coding to do the job. All right, so I said documenting, documenting, documenting. Anything I make a change I write on a piece of paper and put it in a folder it's called my diary. So at the end of this presentation, for example, I will have to describe what I did. And if someone uh, wants to follow up or uh, rewatch, they can start from what, uh, anywhere and then uh, move on. So that's why I recommend to document, document, document anything that you do, because no matter how smart or uh, stupid you are, um, documentation is the key for everything. Anyway, now um, I may have to skip the cameras option because uh, what this is is just to show you uh, for our Sunday services, we use in Kodak, but you can do use any preferred uh, camera with a very high definition. It, it will uh, do what you need to do, and various software, Adobe Creative Suite, and for us, we use Adobe Premiere Pro. And here is the main reason of this uh, training: What is Adobe Premiere Pro? So Adobe Premiere Pro is a part of Adobe Creative Suite, or uh, Adobe, now they call it uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. They have many, many services or many software that do various things. I'm sure the popular one is Photoshop and Adobe or Acrobat DC, and they have like almost 50 plus software or application. And 
for this tutorial, I want you to know the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro. And as I said, I'm not going to uh, give you a fish. I'm going to teach you how to find a fish. So I'm going to teach you how to find what you need to know about Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, first of all, I can tell you that it's not cheap. So that's why it does what it does. And uh, price-wise, you can different have different uh, options. You can either have uh, an entire license, for the, or you can have just a, a license for one product. So, um, what, what I, I recommend is to go over and then see any uh, choice that fits your need and, uh, and then you can make a selection. I just want to put this uh, up front, but it, 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 it's not cheap. So when, when you open your first uh, Adobe Premiere Pro session, it asks you two things. Do you want to create a new project or do you want to open an existing project? Um, I'm going to go to a new project. Next, it asks you to name the project and then it, it shows you it shows you the location. I'm going to keep by the default uh, uh, section or folder. Then I'm going to call it uh, Streaming funny. But just so you know, as I showed you, I keep uh, my standard style because when you have so many files, I'm going to say 2020, 05, 30. This will tell me when this was uh, I created. And then I'm going to say MDBC, and this will tell me to the bottom line. And then I'm going to say selling training and I forgot to add it on then first the rest uh, are my default I'm going to keep them as they are and uh, let it load and Take a couple of seconds to load. And this is what you see when you start. If you don't see this, you can go into Windows and then go to Workspace. And then you can select how you want to view your content. So I always select all panel, but I can also select uh, either graphics, effects, editing, color, audio, depending on what I'm working on. Like, uh, like right now, I'm going to do two uh, pieces. I'm going to work on the choir, how, how I combine the choir, because that is the hard one. Once you know how to combine the choir, the rest is drag and drop and as simple as that. So um, I'm gonna go to my folder. So I want to go to Mount Zion, I want to go to streaming, and it was in May, and it was on 24th. And the choir, I have a folder called choir. And so I have all these songs from different choir members. They all send me their videos. And then my job was to listen and then prune. By prune, I mean 
to cut them exactly when they started singing so they are all in sync. This is the one that take a little longer depending on uh, how accurate you are in listening. So that's why I said organizing, uh, organizing become handy here. So I'm going to select all those songs and I'm going to drag them into, okay, I didn't say that. So on my screen here, you see four section. There's a section on the bottom left on my side called import media to start. Then there's a, on the bottom right, there's a section called drop media here to create. These are the main things you need to know. Anything you drag from import to, and you drop it here to create, you, you, are, you are already a hero because that's what you need to do. But because you also need to do a little extra, you may need to use this other section on top left to prune, to take out what you don't need to use. And this other section on the uh, top right, that's where our content will be displayed. Right, so let me drag my song into the media section and I am going to start also what I'm not going to do here for our choir because the studio can do a good job in um, making the sound more appealing. I'm going to explain what happened. So for last Sunday, I'm going to start, uh, start from, uh, from there. So last Sunday, I had to listen to each singer one by one. So right here, I'm going to listen to Angie. And then I'm going to play. And what, what is happening, Angie is listening, listening from uh, a headset when, when uh, Mrs. Broadwell is singing. So Mrs. Broadwell sent a pre-recorded version and the job of Angie is to listen and sing along. So what I have to do is to create an audio version of this and make an audio version of all singers and then create just audios. The reason of this is to make sure they are in sync, all those audios, once I met them, I send them to Fred. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. So for for Angie, let me start again. I'm gonna listen, then I'm gonna watch when she starts. Okay. So I didn't say anything, but for me, on my keyboard, I typed there's a shortcut that started exactly when she started. So this is where it's hard to describe, but my plan is to make sure I am in sync with her and then I just take out the unwanted pieces. So now let me drag it here. And then we're gonna start and see if I did it right. No, I failed because She's starting as like cause, so I'm missing B cause. So those are little details that uh, become um, tricky. Patience, may I interject right here and just say, what we all need to recognize, this part of uh, producing content is the most time consuming. Having to sync these voices together. Um, I was on the phone call with Fred Birdwell and this is, Birdwell goes and spends time in his studio 
Um, they lay down some tracks and then they put them together. Then they send them to patients and they go back and forth, back and forth. It can take always, it can take up to almost uh, an hour for every minute of content that's being produced uh, in doing this. So we certainly, again, patients appreciate what you're doing, what Fred's doing, what the choir ministry, Mrs. Birdwell and all you all who are part of the choir are doing, because it obviously is an integral part of what we're doing as a part of the worship experience. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you're welcome, you're welcome, Mike. <laughs> well, Amen. <laughs> when, what the, the, the big part of it is uh, to, to, to love it, because if you don't love it, it's, it's boring and it's like shit. But anyway, <laughs> it's uh, something that uh, I love it by doing it. So that's why I can spend hours and uh, until uh, Ricky told me uh, I need to go to bed. Anyway, that's a different subject. Um, let me play this again. Okay. I think I got it. No. Okay, so that was twenty. Okay, 24, 23, okay. okay, I think I got it. So, now, let me, let me see again. Because... With the, to know to know that I got it, I need to also do another singer. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna listen to Sophia. Because of okay, so now I'm gonna drag the two. I'm gonna say change seconds. Because okay, so now I'm gonna combine them and see if they are in sync. Now. Okay, so what happened? Because there was some, a little, like, 0.5 milliseconds lag. So, let me go. Because. Okay, I think Sophia is stepping right. I'm going to redo. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Because of who you 
So, I'm, I'm close to how I want them to look. So now you see how time consuming this can be, okay? Now, that's the sound. I need, I need them to be lined. How do I do that? So, <laughs> as you see, Sophia, we used a different style and then Andrew used a different style for recording and to change the, the size of each photo, I have to select, for example, Sophia and I need to change, hold on. I need to change. So there are two ways. I can either minimize by double clicking on the video. I have to select it first, then double clicking and allowing me to do and do. Oh. Hold on. Oops. Okay. So there's something I did before I said it, so I can test it first. I needed to have access to the clips themselves. So I went to window and then I want to view effects. So as I said, this work play, workspaces allow you to, be, to do different things. So when I was in all panel, I was unable to access to all these clips as separate entities. So I have to go to window, workspaces, and then effects. So this way, I'm able to select a video on, a top, on top of another one, so I can drag it and then I can uh, put it where I want it to, to, to be. Now I'm gonna select Sophia, then I'm gonna double click on it, and I'm gonna narrow it because it's too big. Then I'm gonna bring it down somewhere, So this is one, one way. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my heart and say, Lord, I worship you. Because okay, so. I think I'm satisfied by the alignment. And there's also something I want to show you. Usually you should be able to narrow and then have a size of Sophia. So you get rid of these spaces because once you get like 20 or 10 singers, and then you want to put them in one, one screen it can take time to uh, prune and uh, realign. But <clears throat> that's also something I prefer not to spend time on it. I wanted to, I wanted to show how you can do um, the syncing. Make sure 
you get uh, a good use of this time. I'm going to combine all these songs so you can, you know, get an idea because this is the main piece. The rest, I will, I will take less than five minutes to do uh, the rest of uh, the compiling. So I'm going to look for other singers. I'm going to go to Becky. Because of okay. So the, the good news is once once you do one right, you get you get an idea where to start. So I'm not telling you how I'm doing it, but to to to, to take a frame of Becky. I did start from zero when she started singing and on the keyboard there's a shortcut called I for input and O for output and once she started singing I I, I clicked on I that way like I started just when she started and that's how I'm able to uh, combine them so they are all starting almost at the same time and now don't move the key right here. Next, going to carry. Because of okay. Because of who you are. Sounds like you are too insane. And now I'm going to do Because so time wise, it's now taking me less than sixty seconds to align. So we are still in sync and and also what I am sharing with you. I, I spend hours learning it. So you may spend less than less than what I spend because I, I have no idea. And uh, I just uh, looked on YouTube and went on because also different YouTubers have different experience and there's they say something and it doesn't work the same way they, they expect you to make it run. So that's why what I'm sharing with you may not work, but it may work. But if you want to get a good hands on it, you can watch various YouTube uh, tutorials on how they did it, and then you can have your own uh, way of doing it. Like what I'm doing is a style I decided to do or to use, and if if it works for if it works for you, go for it. Okay, now I'm going to. Because I think I didn't do it right here. Let me try. My 
very right. So next is Terry. Because of so just so you know, the way I'm organizing these clips is not the best, but uh, because I have no time to go over on how I shrink all of them. There's also another tutorial that can show you how to do that, but uh, uh, you, you can always find your way to organize things. Okay, now I'm gonna put Cherry here. Okay. So as you see, depending on the size of your screen, it can become a little challenging to put uh, clips on top of it uh, on top of each other. So I'm gonna shrink my screen and then I'm gonna max uh, the uh, the section where I'm dropping them. So now let me play. Okay, so good. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is something. Thank you, guys. So the way I'm organizing them, it's uh, to allow me to have space because I don't have time to edit them. Usually I should uh, be able to cut them into uh, small pieces so I can only use their, their faces, but because I have no time, I'm just uh, dragging and uh, minimizing them and then adding uh, clips on top of each other. But this is not the best way of doing it, but that's not uh, the priority of this clip. Uh, the priority here is to make sure I get them all singing in sync. Okay. Next is the picture. Because okay. you so far so good. Okay. 
So for this clip, I don't know if you are noticing anything. Let me play. Because of who you are, I give. So I want to use this as a case study. I, I, I do not like that someone is singing and is recording or it's like I'm here I have two uh, inputs and I only need one audio input. So this is what happened for, for uh, Mrs. Acox. I had to mute her. I, can, I only have to use her face because if I combine this uh, audio with the audio that uh, Fred sent, that was going to be uh, chaos. So this is just a, a good case I have to show. People need to only hear and they only need to record only their solo voice. They don't, we, we don't need to hear what they are listening. So this is very, very, very important. So what you needed is just a headset, that's all. Now, let me start and then get the... Uh, Sorry, so that is sometimes what you get if your computer performance gets uh, too much because right now um, I have the, the, the CPU, the highest, the high end CPU you can get, but still, uh, sometimes the, the, the voice or the, the sound get uh, use the max of uh, my uh, GPU. All right, so what I'm going to do is. Uh, Vacox, Okay, next mm, this guy. Because picking it up very quick they, they are singing in sync but there's like a mini 0 0.05 seconds difference in some singer but that's what you get when people sing together even if they are singing live so just want to make sure you are aware of those vibes yeah all right now, and I 
So, this is the audio that uh, Mrs. Broadway sent. Because of who you are. This is what everybody was supposed to listen to and send their, their audio. And so I have to re receive it, you know, to use it before I receive the final product. Okay, so this is the final audio I received from Fred. The way we did it, I had to send Fred the audio as I showed you. I have to create each singer audio when they started. I send this folder to Fred. Fred uh, tune them in and align them and then combine them and he sent me one file that sounds like this. What I have to do with it, I have to find when they started singing because I, 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 I don't need the beginning. I missed it. Okay, so now. What I have to do, <clears throat> you can always do this in different ways, but to, to, to save time, all these audios don't need them. Now, if I play, you see them singing, but yeah, nothing, all right? And that's exactly what I want. Now, what I want is to add So that's how you get a finished product. So sorry for the organization or what you're viewing, but the point is how to get people sync together. That's that's the main point. <laughs> how to combine songs. So I'm going to repeat the, what, what happened. The choir director, in our case, uh, brother has sent, go to Fred and Fred record when Mrs. Brother is uh, using piano without singing. Then, uh, 
this is where I record herself and the piano in sync. The recorded part is what is sent to the choir. The choir members listen and record their, their face and audio. So that's what I need to get. And that's what you were seeing me putting together, making sure they are uh, singing in sync. And then once I have that, that's just for video. For audio, I have to get when they just start, started singing, create a different file, which is what you see. Well, uh, Sunday, I had a folder called audio, a folder called choir, a folder called final. So in the folder of choir, I had their clips. And then I created a folder of audio that I sent to Fred. Fred tuned in and he sent me back a single file called final. And that is what you're listening now. And my job was to eliminate all their solo and replace all of them by the single file that I received from Fred. This is a way, but in case Fred didn't do that, I was going to keep their original and then that's what you would see you're getting a little with less, uh, less uh, studio quality because uh, Fred used the, his uh, high-end studio because I don't have it. I, what I do is just uh, combining, that's all. <laughs> Okay, so now you know how, how it works. So, any question? No question. I'm gonna. Wow. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to get clarification uh -huh. on um, when you are. Um, aligning all of the, the the clips because it seems after after you align the first two determining the were you determining the end point of their singing starting and then it seems like once you got those two the others will be easily lined up i just wanted to understand if, if i'm perceiving that correctly and and what made it that way for the rest of the clips Always, first two always, always the first one is the hard one because you need to find how they all gonna be al aligned. So, beginning is like, let me see, let me try again. When they say because, the beginning can be a second before because, or just because, or a little after because, and in, in video editing, on my end, I don't see it in seconds. I, I see it in mil, milli, million milliseconds, because once you see that, it allow you to uh, decide so in this case, it's it's a, it's a it's a question of preferences of when to start. So does that answer your question, uh, Uh Yes. Were you okay? I'm I'm looking up in the um, what is it? Not the preview window, but anyway, where where you have the vocal, the the music track pulled up, mm -hmm. but on the um, on the clips, obviously there's audio and there's video. Yeah. Were you just identifying the vocal tracks because you can clearly see when the voice starts? Is yeah. that where you determine the end point? You were looking at those, and then once you have those two lined up, the others could pretty That's, much be. That, 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 is, that is true, and here become a question of people have, okay, 
have their lips speed defer. So the speed of their lips is a big deal here because to know when someone started or because sometimes they can open their lips but their voice comes after. So that go into some uh, uh, technical uh, jargons that uh, can uh, force the editor to know how to use them all. And also this become a question of um, preferences. You can prefer either to align them based on different things. So for me, I really don't know how to tell you how I did it. I just uh, follow the vibe and then with the vibe, you just uh, know how, what to do. You don't need to know like how or what to do. It's just uh, you sync okay. with the choir and then, yeah. Uh, okay, I was just trying to understand your, uh, your process or your workflow. So uh, I think, this is I think for me, it'll be easier time, to look at the It's audience. a good time for workflow. Workflow here, there's no uh, playbook. The workflow here, it's experience and practice. That's, that's yeah. why I'm able to present this uh, training because I've been doing it for the last 10 sessions, not 10 years, 10 sessions. In 10, 10 sessions, I, I, I have confidence on how to do it and what to do, and that's why I'm able to tell you how I did it, but you don't need to do how mm -hmm. I did it. You don't need to do it the, the same way I did it. Yes, yes. All right, okay. thank you. Yeah, I'm just trying to get understanding. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, so no question. I'm gonna move on and close this session. I mean this clip and open a new one. The new clip is going to be how we do Sunday service. So again, organization and style. Because we do it so often, I created as something that is redundant. If something happen more than once, I don't want to do it again. So I created a folder of uh, templates. So what you do, what you see on Sunday, you see something that goes like this. I don't have to do it every Sunday, I did it once. And you see something that goes like this. This was uh, a, a test, I didn't use it. And then something like this, something like this, you get the idea. So. To do that, we need after effect. Uh, uh, was it in the program? I don't think so. Ah, Adobe Creative Suite, in spite of Adobe Creative Suite. So after effect is another family of Adobe uh, Cloud that yeah. allow you to, you know, do fancy text uh, movement uh, and. Uh, you know, so I'm going to do one for you right here. Oops, looks like I'm going to sessions. So I'm going to open a new project. And I'm going to wait. So when there's any delay, I go to my uh, task manager, and then go to performance. Then I want to see how my uh, CPU is running. If there's anything, any irregularity, then it tells me that I need to close some application because even if uh, I have a high-end uh, processor, there are sometimes I'm doing things that are requiring uh, uh, much uh, bandwidth. So I'm going to start a new composition. Then I'm going to Hold this composition. Zero five thirty. Again, this is a style. Don't need to name it the same way. And then intro. <coughs> intro and, and then the rest. Uh, you can decide how you want them to look like. Then. What is going to be the background? Um, I think. Okay, this is this is a good time to show you the color. Uh, 
You can choose to use RGB, red, green, blue style, or you can use a, uh, the HCD, or you can choose to use hex. Okay, I'm gonna do this time. Hex. So, the, the way the computer know what you're talking about, you have to give it numbers based on the, the representation of color based on numbers. So, let's see if I can, uh, and then when you find the color you're looking for, you just have to copy this hex code and that's what you bring in here and then voila you get a color because it, it's 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 had to be exact so i'm trying to find that uh, as you all rec recognize that uh, the bag the background color that uh, is close to what you see in minimum and content but i'm not getting it right but the point is how you can change the color and how, how you can decide uh, what is going to be your background. So that is going to be my background now. And it's say the red sign you're seeing, it's saying refresh disabled. So on my keyboard, there's a, a key that is enabled and it may affect what I'm doing. So I have to disable it. So this is. This is going to be the background of my, my text, All right? Now, I want just to write anything. So I'm gonna, it's not to write anything, I need to write a text, an introduction to what I'll be displaying. So on the top left, I have all these sections. Uh, there's home, uh, tools, Hand tools, zoom, reverse, unified, but I'm looking for text. So now I have text. So I click in here and then I start typing. Okay, so I'm looking at the font. Uh, I don't like it. So I select the, the text and then on the far right, I have the text section. If it was not there, I would have to go into view and then display layout control and then that will allow me to have uh, this section. But there are, there are always uh, many ways to come back to what's uh, let's say if what you want to see is not being displayed, you can go to Windows, Workspace, and then you can select uh, each section, because right now I'm into text. That's why you see text selected, and that's why you see it here. So I said I want to change the font, and I love Lato. Uh, L-A-T-O. Here you go. And then I need to, to change the size. But so that's the size of, okay. Yeah, looks good. Now I'm gonna drag it so I can put it where I want. Oops. It, my screen is telling me that my caps lock is enabled, so I'm gonna disable it. Right now, uh, if you see, there is a section that allows me to align, but it, it doesn't work for uh, the text. So, for this one, I have to either manually align it, and there's also other shortcuts that I'm not seeing. Let's go to text. And, yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I, I like uh, the font, I like the size. Now, the next will be 
to use motion, like to make to make the text move. Just like um, close to this, but this is a little style that uh, you can look up on how to how to make the text do that. So on the bottom left here, there is my text. Then I'm going to extend. And I'm going to extend text again. And I'm going to extend transform. So <clears throat> I'm going to zoom this. All right. So in transform, I have a position where the text is located. I'm going to select position and then what you see on my screen, I'm, I'm moving the location in time at X time where my text is going to be located. So I want at two seconds, my, my text to be at. So the, the, the location and the position is based on pixels location. Okay, so, mm -hmm. and then, so, anytime I make any movement, the position record the location where my text is at at a given time. So, I want at that time, my text to be okay, and then all right, so I said. At, at zero time, I want my text to be at minus 1000 pixel. And at four seconds, I want my pixel to be at 270 pixels. Now, let's, let's play. Isn't that fun? That's how. That's how this works. But you can make it a little fancy just like that. And you can do different movements. So you may think that it's that simple, but uh, I'm doing it because I just uh, spent time mastering this. Now, once you have it, you have to make it as a clip. How do you do that? So you have it saved. And you go to export and then we want to export to a render queue and then generate a, a, a location and the destination for us and then i'm going to click render what is doing is uh, performing the action and it's as if it's recording the action. So that's what it does. Now, once it's done, it's gonna tell me where it's located and then I'm gonna watch it as a finished video. Yeah, I made, a, I made a mistake because I made it last almost 30 seconds. So you have to give me a little more time before it's done uh, rendering. Yeah, this is a good a good example of uh, what I should have also included because oh, this, that sound is saying that my clip is done. So now 
I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to go to quick access. That would be the easy way to find where it's who we'll saved that. And hold on. Okay, alpha mode. Training. No. Okay. So I'm going to change something, which is the time. And I'm going to put it back to uh, seven seconds. And then at, at six. Second, I want my text to be here, yeah. and then at seven seconds, I want it to be done. Okay. Okay. Now, save. Oh, okay. All right. Save. So while it's rendering, it's still rendering uh, 30 seconds. This is also another exam, a good time to show you <clears throat> when you create a Adobe effect uh, frame, you have to decide how long it's gonna, how long it's gonna last. So I didn't need to change that. Let me go now look at my product. All right, so now I know you are not going to memorize every, everything I did in Adobe uh, Effects, but After Effects, that is how you uh, can do it. And for, for Mount Zion, as, uh, as I showed you, uh, if you want to help us, you don't need to redo that because we already have templates for that. So we have templates for every section of our Sunday service, but anytime there's a new um, uh, part, we add it on, and that's what you see in Sunday service clip. So it's, that's how we, we have done it. Now, I know we um, went a little above and beyond our, our time, and last and low, not least, I need to make a Sunday service complete so you can see how we do it because you saw how we do the choir part you saw how we do the, the templates now we're gonna do our 
Sunday service for May 31st. So new project. Now you get the idea. And you can see. Okay. So I think you, you remember this and I need this. All right. First of all, call worship. What do I do? I go into the template folder. But before I do call to worship, I have the the main composition I call I call this main composition. And because I already know it, I don't need to put it into the media. I can put it straight into the frame. And it's the play. Yep. I'm satisfied. Then we're gonna go to the next. The next is so in a few days we started uh, adding like a an introduction to someone welcoming uh, uh, the viewers. So we've been using uh, Ricky Clip, but you will be surprised by tomorrow. But for this demo, I'm going to use Ricky again. Okay, this is a good time to explain. So you see, uh, we don't need to know the time lap before he started speaking. So what do I do? As now you, you are becoming a pro. I look for where he started speaking. Right there. How do I know? There are signs that show from the audio version, audio uh, part that the sound is starting is being used. I know that's when we're gonna start. So what I do, I select the clip and then select from where he started until there. And then I'm gonna drag it and drop it right here. Let's play it again. Good morning, good morning. So I took out the, the, the time that I, we didn't need. Good. It's your boy, Ricky B. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to listen to when he. As we shelter in and know there is no safer place to be than to be in the will of God. Okay, so I got that now. I'm going to go to my checklist. I'm going to go to code to worship. So I'm going to go to the template. Place to be, then to be in the will of God. Amen. God bless you. Okay, so there's some part I didn't take out and I don't want people to see when he's when he's done and he's trying to turn off turn off his uh, recording. So what I will do I'll play again. It's right there. Now, as you shelter in and know, there is no safer place to be than to be in the will of God. Amen. God bless you. Right there. So I want to take out everything that comes after that section. So what I do, I select, then drag right there. And then, there you go. Okay. All right, so we took out uh, what you didn't want. Now we added the code to worship section and then I'm gonna look for course worship content. So I'm gonna look into here. So that after, every time we do record on Thursday, 
I receive, okay, I didn't say that. Let me go to that thing. So we meet every Thursday at two and Tony is the one who do the recording with his uh, professional cameras. Once we, once we are done recording, he give, he give me his SD card and then I copy the content from that SD card and I put it on my computer and I put them into the appropriate folder. So that's why they are all into May 20, May 24th folder. So we are using May 24th as a demo, just so you know. So there's also May 31st, which is tomorrow, which is already has been done. Good. All right. So I'm looking for what comes after uh, November. Okay. And I'm going to listen and see if I can take that. Control in three, two. All right. So no one needs to listen to when uh, uh, Tony is uh, counting when it's time to start. So that's why we have to take that out again. Boom. And then drag it. Why don't you join us? To come back. Now I'm going to go to the end. And I'm going to listen when he's finished. Even unto death. Amen. Boom. So. I want to shrink what comes after that. Boom. Now we're done with post worship. Okay. This is a question of preferences. We can either have a song after that, but depending on when how many songs we have, uh, we can put a song there. But uh, for, for this time, I didn't put a song. But this is again question of preferences. I'm going to go to invocation. So I'm going to look for an invocation template. And drag it. And then that's the template. And then I'm going to look for the reading of the invocation. All right, now. Oh, so there's something I'm doing that I'm not saying. So depending on the screen you're using, either a big screen or a small screen, here on the bottom, there is a way to shrink or to maximize so you can have uh, a full access to, to, the, to on, the, on the time lap of what is being said. So let me do it here. So right here, I need to know where exactly uh, Ricky started uh, reading the, the invocation. So I need to explain expand expand and now you see there's, there's a section when the sound started coming so i don't want that i don't, I don't want anything that came before so i'm going to select again all of them and then bring that red uh color then move and then drag and drop and then it's play again Want you to join us? So we took out that that uh, Tony count uh, and down. And then start again. Let us worship you in spirit and truth. Amen. Okay, so I want to delete anything I can say. I'm gonna go back to the plan. So invocation. Now I need the music. God never fails. So, for the choir, uh, if you are choir members who are in this uh, training, I really, uh, we've been using songs we had in, 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 the, in our library. Uh, sometimes songs get requested. So we had to use uh, God Never Fail and we couldn't find it. So, uh, and then you have to look for something else, praising what you wait. Okay, that's what I selected. Um, yeah, so the choir is the, the big contributor for Sunday services. That's why having uh, the choir content is a big deal. And uh, I don't know if uh, 
Sherry is still here because she's helping us recording all videos on DVD to make them available so we can start reusing them. Um, let's see. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing. I go into the old services and see there's a, a song I can reuse or if there's a new one. And so I'm preparing 24th, so I'm going to look into May 10th. And I'm going to play it. Then I'm going to look for a song. Let's say I want to use that song. All right. So what do I do? I go back to Adobe Premiere Pro. Then come into the folder where that song I'm interested in is that. And I'm going to drag the entire service. And then I'm going to shrink so I can have access to the entire tape. So that I know exactly where that is. If not, I'm going to move and then uh, go close to. So I don't, I don't need those beginning. I will shrink. And then I'm going to. Uh, right now, I see. Right. That's the song I want. I'm going to go close to the end now. I think I, I got it. There do. I delete. Boom. So that's how that's how I'm able to reuse the same song from the previous service, just like that. Let's, let's play to see if it's doing well. Never, even unto death. Amen. Won't you join us for worship you? Let us worship you in spirit and truth. Amen. So, the song. Now I, I, I showed you how I was able to take a song from a previous service by just uh, uh, framing it and take just the song from the service. But how about the sound? Uh, the sound is a little low. What do I do? I select just the sound of that clip. And then I, have, I haven't explained this uh, section, but I want to go straight to the audio. I'm looking for audio channels. And then it brings me this. First, it's it's singing on a, on a solo, or it's a on when you have a computer you have uh, on the left and on the right side. I want it to show to to be displayed on both, you know, like in a stereo style. So that's done. Now. Get that done, but I need to gain the sounds. So I, oh, I have to say what I'm doing. I right click on uh, audio part, and then I'm looking for audio gain, and it's counted in decibel or dB. Uh, those who uh, have physics experience, it's, uh, dB stands for decibel, and I'm going to make it a little louder. I'm going to count to 10. Let me see how it's going to go. Then, and on my screen, you see it's anytime it shows a red or it goes above uh, minus six or close to zero, that, that, that is not good. They have to, I have to go back here and I'm going to take your gain and reduce it a little bit. Like here you have to play. There's no one 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 way of doing it, but you have to play until 
the sound is still a little bit low and you never show the red sign because so if people have a big device, uh, it can be disturbing. Satisfied, then I'm gonna go to the next branch, outer prayer. So I need outer prayer strain. Then I'm gonna go back into my folders, the notes, and the templates. And I'm add that. And now uh, I need a that date out of prayer. Ah, okay. For out of prayers, how do we get out of prayer? Someone sent us a clip, and which I didn't have time to explain, but I'm gonna now go on it. So we, we created a single place with content that's sent. But in the past, they would send it to this person, that person, and then uh, anyway, it was becoming a mess. So we created a, a place called uh, Care at Mount Zion. And anything that is for the Sunday service, it's sent to this, e to this email, and many people who are in the AV have access to this. And then, so I created folders, so I know how to find content. Uh, I know that it's the recording, I know that it's for the choir. So if you have Outlook, you know how this works. And we also have a OneDrive folder, a OneDrive folder. So again, time 2020, April, May, June, June, Sunday, May 24th, boom, and voila. So the content gets sent to this email, the content gets uploaded to the appropriate folder, and if someone is working on it, they know where to find it. So anyone, anyone who is interested can volunteer to manage this because it's not a one-man show. And the reason why I created it is I was being overwhelmed by email, so I need someone to take care of this. Um, all right. How do we get out of prayer? Out of prayer gets sent here, or depending on who is doing it, they either send the therapy to me. And uh, recently I received it from uh, Monte. Oops. And video scripture, AC, boom, boom, boom. Download it, go into the okay, folder, and then name it the exact word. I know that Alta Prayer, Alta Prayer are number five, and that's how I know where to put it. I need at a prayer, download it, and now I am going to drag and drop it. We come to the oh. Okay. That moment in our worship service where we get to have a conversation with the creator of the universe. Please pray for the following persons and family. Okay, so I'll go to the end. Ones and pleasing to you. We have innumerable other needs, Lord. Some are too personal to name, some are too complicated to label. 
Some are too threatening to admit. But you know them. You know us. And you are with us. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, so I'm satisfied. Then I'm going to look at the next, uh, which is Ty. Then I'm going to look for the clip. Oh. Okay, I need the new version. at this time to support this ministry and be mindful. I've said it before and it's certainly a point. Okay, so I'm gonna check out that countdown. I'm gonna drag it, oops. It's offering time. It's offering time. Okay, so offering time is another good time to show you how to add some text. So, Ricky is reading that offering, and I know he's going to need the address. So, I clicked on the text, and then I need to add a text to what he's saying. So, text. I don't know. If Exactly what you're going to say, but I know how to find it. So I'm going to go to a long dialogue type and I'm going to need, I'm going to need the address. And then I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste it. So it's too big. And there's no background. So what I do, I select the text and go to the text option. Effect, text graphics. Yeah, the graphics. And I want this to be on the bottom. So I select down the bottom. I want to be centered, centered, and I want the text to be in Tahoe. I mean, uh, later. I like that font. So that's just a question of preferences. And I need a background. So. I'm going to add a background to the text. I'm going to select background here. And then I'm going to select. So now. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, at this time to support this ministry and be mindful. I've said it before. So you see that the text is now gone. I need to extend how long that text can be viewed. And it certainly applies now, and that is salvation is free. Amen but ministry costs, and our costs continue here at the Mount Zion Church. And so my brothers and sisters, of course, if you were here in my presence, you would write out your check. And okay, so now I need to add the, the giving options. I'm gonna go back to my templates. And templates. And come on, Sunday service templates. And Giving. I'm going to drag it, boom, and extend it. Okay, this is also another good uh, experience of something I haven't shared. So I want this uh, photo to 
um, being the full screen. So what do I do? I select just so that I add it on. And then I do right click on it and say to frame size, boom. Just like that. Put your cash in the envelope, but you're not <laughs> able to do that at the moment. So we encourage you to visit our website, mountzion.net. Click on give. It's right there at the bottom of the screen and put in the amount that you Sorry, Ricky. Uh, we said but on by that anyway. <laughs> I, I did all I could end up putting it in front instead of on the bottom. Anyway. So what you'd like to contribute at this time. We also want to encourage you to consider a reoccurring gift so that you don't okay. always have so I need to extend how long that uh, screen to do this. An additional way, an additional way to give is to text. Text MZBC two seven three two five six and put in your amount at that time. Again, we want to thank you in advance for all that you're doing, and we appreciate it, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I need to pick up some. Um, Ending. Time again, we want to thank you in advance for all that you're doing, and we appreciate it. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So, right there, uh, then we go. Alright, so we are done with I now we need sticker. So I go to the folder and oops, again we type it and we mail the phone and Okay. Got it. Perfect. And picture that you're doing and we appreciate it and we thank you in Jesus name amen I'm going to use okay. 
I'm going to reuse some past content. Just uh, I'm going to reuse the youth scripture. Good morning. My name is Samir Sharazi. Please join me with today's Youth Sunday Scripture. Okay. And the message my name means not keeping my words. The message you are hearing isn't mine. It's the hearing of the word. Thank you. Okay. I need to take out that section. Okay, now I need this picture. And I need to use the template. Once you receive the benediction, we thank God for you being with us. Okay. So, now you, you, you get the point on how the Sunday service is conducted. Because so the rest, I'm going to add uh, the uh, the benediction and blessing and the last uh, announcement. Um, but let me add the announcement because uh, I like to add uh, the, the background sound so you can have an idea on how it works. So Sunday, so I'm going to skip some section here because this is just for demo. I'm going to show you. So I received. PowerPoint from Saturday. I can't put a PowerPoint on, a, on, a, on that video. So what do I do? I have to save as save a copy and need more options. And I need to change the file format as a photo either PNG or a JPEG. I'm gonna create a folder so I don't create a confusion demo. Now, I have a, I get a question, which slide, all of them or just this one? I said all slides. Each slide in your presentation has been saved. I'm gonna close this. How do I receive announcements? I get announcement either once every two weeks. Anytime I get an announcement, I have to update the new service. So that, yeah. So I created this folder. And then I have these, these photos. So I'm going to use these photos on the announcement section. So how do I do that? I just drag, drag it. I can either drag it here, drag it here, or drag it here, as I prefer here. And then I'm gonna select how long each slide gonna last. I'm gonna expect that people gonna spend um, 20 to 30 seconds reading each slide. And same here. And then same here. So 
Uh, okay, so, okay. As you as we did, they are not being full screen, so I need to make them full screen. So I select all of them, right click, and set the frame size. Boom. Just like that. And now I need I need a background sound. Because you know, people watching something are muted uh, so I, I had a song that I use uh, in Minnesota, so that I like it. And like, um, let's see what's the name. <clears throat> I use um, a shakob. So. <laughs> Come on, let the sound of worship be released from your lips tonight. Now from the dark side, me It's too loud and it's too long. So what do I do? I need to put it just in line with the announcement and right at the end of the announcement, I need, I need to cut it. This is the last, the, the last piece I'm gonna show you. And then uh, we're gonna cut it for today because I was expecting two and now we have three hours, but uh, thank you for staying. So this is a good piece you're gonna have uh, as my last uh, presentation. So I want to smoothly start, not to just uh, start too loud. So. What I do, I double click on this audio and oops, screen. so I want to go into editing mode and I'm gonna to go to edit control. So at the beginning of the song, I want the the volume to be at minus 200, 280. That means that mean it's like too low that you can't even hear anything. Then I'm gonna move it to like two seconds. I want the volume to be at, the decibel to be at, Almost zero. So let's see how it sounds sounds like. Okay, so I'm I'm satisfied on how it's uh, smoothly starting. So I'm gonna do the same at the end. So at the end, I want. I want the sound to be at minus 280. And then like a couple of seconds before, I want it to be at a full, um, then I'm gonna pinpoint that. And then I'm gonna say, I want this to be at, yeah. Let's see how it sounds like. Okay. So this is the sound that people listen to when they're reading the announcements. Then you're gonna hear, I'm doing nothing, I just made it, I made it smoothly, reduce the sound. So, you know, I automated it. And voila. Then at the end, I also add uh, the uh, some notes giving take, giving credits to the video editing. So I'm gonna say uh, audio video uh, Tony. I'm just. Uh, being right here, I take time to align it, but 
you, you, you can spend a lot of time doing this. So I prefer to, you know. And, and voila, so now you have a finished product. The next part is to export it into, because these are frames. You, you put different uh, pieces together, you need to combine them. So you go to file and then you go to export as a media. And then this is where you need to choose which format you want to save it as. You have a lot of choices. These are the choices you have, but the default is H264. And you can also save them as audio, video, and video audio, which is what we do. And you can also decide the output name. And I'm going to put this output name as, I'm going to call it a demo. But usually I call them as 20, 20, as you see, you know, 5, 30, uh, Sunday service. Demo, boom. And then you either do Q or export. I'm gonna do export. And depending on uh, how big or how many files you combined, you can take up to five minutes, 10 minutes. And then once it's finished exporting, it's like a two to three gigabyte file. And with that, hold on, let me wait until it shows. Uh, 20 seconds. So while, while it's processing, once we have a finished product, I go back to my folders and then make sure it's in the right folder and it end up in the final folder and this is tomorrow's service. I'm not going to show it to you, so you, you already know. I prefer you, you watch it tomorrow. But um, so this is where it's located on my computer. But on the on the on the web, then you go to Boxcast or wherever you hosted your streaming services, and then you upload it. Let's say if we didn't have a uh, boxcast, the other platform I know where you can broadcast as live, but for some pre-recorded content is on YouTube. You will go to YouTube and uh, go to the go to YouTube studio and, and then upload and schedule it to be either live to expect it to be either live or upload it and schedule when it's going to be broadcasted. Okay, my encoding is has two more minutes to go. All right, so uh, the reason why I'm showing this is uh, it costs money. So it costs some money to someone to uh, license Boxcast for us. And uh, the, if the church doesn't renew the contract, which is uh, in one year, it's long enough, but you know, it costs almost 1,000. There is a free version on YouTube, but you get different type of uh, uh, flavor. Um, let's see. All right. I have one more minute. And while it's processing, does anyone have a question or concern to what was said until now? Um, Patience, this is Ricky. Listen, I don't have a question. My only concern is obviously with what you're doing, being a single individual, and that's why I know you solicited people to step up and be a part of this. 
Um, I want to take this opportunity. I know our numbers are not what they were when we started out, but um, anybody that certainly feels um, willing to participate, to lighten the load um, for patients will be greatly appreciated. He starts graduate school on June 20th. And I've always said, and I'm, you know, stick with this, and that is uh, one monkey, don't stop no show, unless it's a one monkey show, and it can never be that. So we need to have others that have the same skill set so that we don't miss a beat. And this is obviously during this time where we're being sheltered in and we're having to record. Um, the Lord says the same. One day we'll be back in the sanctuary, we'll be going live, and it'll be just that. It'll be live. And all the work and time that it takes now to produce this, obviously, will be um, just a fraction of that. So if you are so inclined, and I pray that you are, maybe not all of it, but maybe you feel that you can give the time and energy for parts of it, please reach out to patients so that um, he can plug you in and, and you can get comfortable doing it now. Uh, while he's still with us, and he's not going anywhere, but while he's still with us, but at the same time, in the future, we'll know that we have the, the players in place to um, continue to make this happen. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that very much. So why are people going to respond? I'm going to show what uh, the video looks like. So once it's done encoding, this is what it looks like. Good morning and welcome. It's your boy, Ricky D, your brother. You live in on or in Bell Barrow. Why don't you join us? Mother doll. Okay, God for you. Just as you watch it on Sunday. So now you have it. Any question or concern or uh, complaint? So will a copy, this is Sherry, will a copy of the uh, recording be available so we can review it at uh, a later time? Yes, I've been recording. So I, I, as I said on the beginning, I'm going to upload it uh, or make it available and say, share the link for, for those who want to rewatch it. Uh, and also, as I said, what I shared is like a glimpse of what this is all about, because most of what I shared is what I, I learned from YouTube and uh, various uh, platforms that this make it easy so you know what to look for for our streaming and for other uh, use of uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and other pieces. Yes, I will share the video at the end. So, any other question? The floor is yours now. I don't have any more questions, but I just want to say thank you, patients, for taking the time. I know um, presenting this to us and for a lot of us, it may have been over our head, but at least we get a taste of what it takes. Mm -hmm. And like with, any, like with anything, the more we're exposed to it, the more we do it, the more comfortable we'll be with it. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, patients, for sharing your expertise and your time. Yeah. What, what I can also share is that. Uh, this is just a, an experience. In the past, it used to uh, take me hours. Now, even being able to demonstrate is another uh, milestone because I was worried on how we, how, how we're going to end up. Um, what, what, like the choir is my big uh, fear. It used to take me hours. Now, what I showed you, I do it in like a, in less than a minute per person, and then it counts. Uh, the choir members who are uh, singing and uh, the other uh, item that take longer is communication. By the time you send an email, you have to expect a response and uh, 
people may have other priority and uh, so those are little expectation and you know things to keep in mind and that's why for choir choir is the because it's a big uh, provider of uh, Mount Zan uh, um, attraction and attendance having making sure uh, we do what they ask and give them time like now I have to give them almost two to three weeks to, to make anything because they take time to make what they make um, what else? Those, those are the main things that I have in mind to share but the rest is uh, you know uh, having a good will because I can share with you because now as you're here I was close to quit because it was taking all my time even myself because uh, I do this on top of my professional life, which I'm, I'm grateful in this uh, coronavirus that uh, uh, I, I, I can give what I have. I don't have uh, unlimited. And uh, so any any assistance there yeah, for what we do in streaming would be appreciated. Uh, people taking uh, taking time, you know, to to do what we do or what I do on top of what Tony does. I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, the Adobe Premiere Pro, is it available on the website where you can go and practice? Because okay. I, I don't have access Adobe to is free, it. Right? So let me share that. So on my screen, if you can see my screen, I'm going to give you my advice of how I did it. As a King County citizen or a citizen of Washington State, you can go to any of your local library and for example we're going to go to Seattle Public Library and you can also do it on King County Library and go to online resources and go to A to Z online resources and you're going to look for L and from L you'll be looking for lynda.com as a, as a library member, patron, you have it. It's not for free because the county paid for it. There. And then you can look for Adobe Premiere Pro, and they will tell you almost what I know. And if it's not enough, you can go on YouTube and uh, look for. Um, Adobe Premiere Pro. Many things. There is effects, sliding, or you know, video editing. That's what mm -hmm. for. A follow-up question: If yep. we want to uh, practice uh, learning how to do a choir song, uh, will you make those files available so we can practice on our own? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I am going to right here. I'm going to give you access so everyone can uh, go to the care library and then uh, I'm going to put those things into the folders here. And then I'm going to name them what they are for, that they are for practice. So there are some that are already pre made for, for, for some services. And then I'm going to create a folder. And then I'm going to show instruction on how to do. What you need to do with them so you can, you know, you can practice. Yeah. If you don't mind sending out uh, an email with that particular link to that, I would appreciate it because I didn't write it down as you were doing it. So uh, I'm going to put it on my to do list and I will do it uh, at the end of a few hours because, uh, yeah, I will be exhausted. Any other questions? Well, it sounds like uh, there's no more question. And uh, so I'm going to say many thanks to Christine, Jobs, uh, Papa. I'm going to guess uh, this is the w, uh, Wally, whose name is Papa here on the screen. Uh, Ricky, Rhonda, and Sherry, thank you very much for, uh, you know, being uh, willing to take this time for the whole day. I know you could have been somewhere else and you chose to be here. 
So much appreciated. Um, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, for you. We thank you yes. for all the work you've done. Anytime. Thank you very much, Patience. I was outside working, so you gave me a, a three-hour break. <laughs> 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 no, I got to get back to it, but thank you very much. And it's very interesting, and uh, you appreciate it. Um, can, I, can I just say something real quick? I know we only have a few people on, but I mean, I can see that the people that are on are people that are committed. You've already shown them by the time you've given to this. Three things, three things, three things we need to be mindful of. Three things. We want people that we engage. We want people who are part of the church. Um, we want people to feel three things. They want them to feel welcome. We want them to feel valued. And we want them to feel loved. Those three things, those three simple things. Welcome valued and loved amen amen thank you yes okay it feels like uh wally webster has something to say but uh, he could he, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he's being reluctant no i uh patience i just want to say that you are probably one of the most inspirational individuals that I have gotten to know in recent memory. Uh, your dedication, your loyalty uh, to whatever you undertake is in my judgment uh, unprecedented. And the time and commitment that you and I spent on, along with several others, Tony and others on the communications project, um, I just sent Harry Bailey a a text message and said that he needs to look into revi re reviving that um, project because if it had gone through, you would have a lot of the uh, equipment and, and, and processes in place that would have been tremendously helpful in this state of, of um, that we're in today. So um, my head is off to you. You are absolutely a phenomenal individual and i appreciate you very much amen amen uh, i don't know how uh, how how appreciative i can be but uh thank you Wally. and so so, so <laughs> there, 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 there's what he said and what he's not said because I, I i'm a good person who can read what he's not said uh people we ask us like why is patients doing it uh for, for those who are here in this meeting, I can tell you why. Uh, when uh, uh, Samuel McKinney, on his last days, uh, I asked, what can I, because I want to do anything I can do outside or inside the church. And uh, he said, uh, if you can uh, give your talent to the church, uh, that, would, that's, that, that, that would be enough, because I was, wanting to volunteer to go to prisons or to help uh, youth or homeless and, and so on. And so doing something uh, you like is uh, valuable than uh, the money you make. So that's why I do what I do. So now you have it. And uh, if there's no other question for me, I'm going to say thank you for your participation. And I am going to send what uh, Christine requested to everybody. And you'll be able to watch this clip. And uh, my recommendation to what you may need to do to be able to just do what I am doing or even more. And uh, thank you. And this close our presentation today. Thank you, Patience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, thank you. Right. Brother Hobbs out. Okay.